And we are set for the opening tip. Hugh Evans, Bill Oaks, Ron Garrison are the officials. The East leading the All-Star Series 29 to 17. The East and West have split the last 10 games. At one point in the early 1980s, the East won five in a row. And last season in San Antonio, the East defeated the West 129 to 118. Now, the problem here, as I see it today, at the Gundarina scoreboard, is it capable? Because Mike <laughs> Fratello coaches the Cleveland Cavaliers in a different brand of basketball. Is that third digit, does it light up? Can they hit the century mark? Mark, maybe they'll just call the game when it's 70 to 65. Everybody will feel right at home. <laughs> and it's called white ball. That is uh, the East squad with Hardaway and Jordan in the backcourt. Hill is up front with Matumbo and Pippen. Well, the strategy for both teams, such as it is, is uh, run fast, jump high, shoot straight. And Scotty Pippen can't get the first one and somehow or other keep those spectacular passes near the court. And this is Gary Payton of the Seattle Sonics getting it back from Carl Malone. And the East back to the offense. Beautiful ball movement that time to give and go. Critical elements for success today, Mark. Playing time. Always, always a good idea to bribe the coach to get you out there. Yes. Well, a lot more the transition game the ability to get up and down the court and then individual offense you have to be able to make it happen off your own dribble John Stockton of the Utah Jazz to Sean Kemp of the Sonics Gary Payton to Sonics in the West starting lineup Akeem Olajuwon putting moves on to Kepi Matumbo did not have the shot shot clock down to one Stockton and here comes Pippen the drive and he's fouled. So Penny Hardaway will go to the line. Penny Hardaway has played only 19 games this season due to a knee injuries, averaging 20 points, five assists for the Orlando Magic, a team that is coming on fast. And playing very well, not only because Penny's back, Nick Anderson is back, Ronnie Cycli is having a terrific season, everything falling into place for the Magic. If you can remember Penny's first All-Star game, well, actually three years ago, very nervous in the first half and has come out ever since then and been much more aggressive, not worrying or deferring to anybody. A couple of mismatches out on the floor. The West has two point guards in Stockton and Peyton, the only two on their team. Two big forwards for the West and two versatile ball handling small forwards for the East. Picked off the fake. Elijah Wan picked up on the double team. There is some defense guys being played out there here in the early going, but a three for Peyton. Off the nice pass from Akeem, talking to the dream before the game, Mark. Fast ended for him today. He lost about five pounds during the course of the month of Ramadan, and he got to eat today for the first time. He's feeling great. That was Michael Jordan's first shot attempt, and here is Brad Hill unleashing his first. It's the East four, the West three. That's a tough matchup for Sean Kemp having to try to guard Grant Hill out of the floor. You'd rather see Grant take that jump shot because he's about the best in the league at beating you off the dribble. <laughs> Akeem with the good forearm up high. And a foul is called. Bill Oaks with the call as you uh, take a look back at the pass uh, from Akeem. Akeem is so talented, Mark. He's able to step out and play that high post going up against the much, much taller Dikembe Mutombo. Jordan foul. fouled by Peyton. Here's that nightmare matchup for Sean Kemp trying to watch. Uh, Grand Hill has to give ground, has to back up, but he could at least offer a hand up in his face. <laughs> Michael Jordan, who has some very pleasant memories of big games that he's played here in Cleveland, had his career high 69 at the Richfield Coliseum. And Gary Payton's got to go, what, what did I do wrong? Last Sunday, he had to watch Michael Jordan drill him and others for 45, and here he has to guard him again in all-star competition. Michael, the practice yesterday, told me that he's a little bit more relaxed this year. Last year, after the two-year layoff, he came out so focused, so intense. He's going to enjoy himself a little bit more with all the festivities. There's been a smile on Michael's face all weekend. Akeem Olajuwon has tied the game at five. 
Ava Lajuan, one of three Houston Rocket All-Stars, but Clyde Drexler, Charles Barkley, sitting it out because of injury. Jordan trying to twist that one home. Here comes Peyton, the look away to Stockton. Yes. And the West leads 7-5. Now, John's been on the receiving end of a couple of passes earlier in the game when it first started. He was in the post, of course. Got a nice pass from Sean Kemp, and there, a good feed from Peyton. But John's just not used to playing with a lot of guys who handle the ball in the up and down game. Oh, oh. a tumble! <laughs> Consecutively, another opportunity. Oh, almost a hat trick. <laughs> the game tied at 7. The, they held Carl Malone. Carl Malone, who has been into it verbally from the introductions today with Scotty Pippen. Carl got out in transition, and Scotty just reached out and grabbed him, held him. Obvious foul. Foul was called on Jordan. That is his first. And here's Kemp from long range. A three for Sean Kemp, who has been struggling recently, but he's been hitting the three. He's been looking for the three more frequently this season. Went through the hands of Matumbo. Beautiful passing by Ken. I think that's one of the great things about the All-Star game, Marv, is, is, is the creativity that you see, not only in shooting, but in, in the ball movement as well. Three and a half minutes gone by in the first quarter. That was intended for Jordan. Marv Albert with Matt Dukas. And Bill Walton will be joined later on the sidelines by Ahmad Rashad and Jim Gray. Hill fronting Kemp. Call for the foul. A push on Grant Hill of the Detroit Pistons. Marv, you talked with Matt earlier about the, the advantages for the East. It looks like the East has the 6-7 range dominance with Jordan and Pippen, Grand Hill and Penny. But the West has the 6'10 to 6'11 range dominance with Kemp and Carl Malone, Christian Leitner. <laughs> and of course, the new guys on the bench uh, with Kevin Garnett. All right, Peyton tries to alley-oop with his teammate Kemp. And it did not work. Well, we've seen two alley-oopers so far. Nobody can get a hand on them yet. They're going to have to adjust their passes. The problem the East is having right now, they really don't know who the primary ball handler is. Everybody's taking their turn because the Grand Hill has it. He's used to handling. Penny Hardaway gets the jumper there. He's used to handling for Orlando. Of course, Pippen for Chicago. It is the West 10 and the East 9. And Kemp fires one up. Oh. Well, Carmelo. On the rebound, obviously, Sean Kemp following the philosophy that you laid out in our opening remarks. Shoot every time. The coach is not going to yank you for getting over aggressive on the offensive end. Oh, Hill stepped out of bounds. He backed up to try to handle that pass. On the West Wall, number two, Mitch Richmond. Scotty Pippen in transition is going to get to the hoop at the last minute realizes that everybody else has stopped waiting for the whistle he just threw it up and then the alley-oop a little bit too far down sean kemp can get in the air with anybody if you overthrow him it's a little hard akeem olajuwon showing the outside touch he's hit his first two shots the west with a 14-9 lead mitch richmond of the sacramento kings mvp of the all-star game two years ago has come on replacing john stockton here's jordan Rebounded by Malone, so Michael missing on his first three-shot attempts. Peyton directing traffic, gives it up to Richmond for three. Yes. Well, off the bench, Mitch Richmond, who's averaging 25 a game, hitting on his first shot. Peyton with the steal. What a great try by Jordan. He looked sideline, tried to fake out oh. Peyton. Peyton didn't bite. And Jordan with the rebound. He has Hill ahead of the field. You can enter that one of the slam dunk contest. 24 hours a bit a bit late grant just getting started really in his all-star career has learned quickly don't get back on defense <laughs> these are valuable <laughs> lessons that you have been passing on bill i learned the hard way marv a cap with a look away pass broke it up and now peyton with the ball fit finds below Commit. 5.45 remaining, first quarter. It's the West 17, the East 11. And the ball back to the West. I'm here with Will Chamberlain, one of the greatest players to ever play the game. But I guess I could say that about 50 times, but when I'm talking about you, Big Bell, a little bit more enthusiasm. Well, I appreciate that. It's nice though to be here, but I want to say one thing. You know, they keep talking about all of us being great and so on and so forth, but 
our chances would have never came if it wasn't for the originators of the NBA. And we got to say thank you to them and the NBA in continuance of what they're doing because they're giving us all a chance to show our stuff and uh, make a lot of money and have a lot of fun in life. But one of the great things I saw yesterday was that I saw you and Michael Jordan talking. Now, I didn't know that you guys had never met. Never met. What was going on in that conversation? Well, I just went over to say hello to him, and uh, I, I was like everybody else. I'm in all. <laughs> so, so I went over to say hello and uh, said that we had to get together and talk sometime, which he wanted to do. And it was, it was, it was nice. I mean, most people have thought that we had met, but no, uh, I don't play golf. You understand? And he doesn't play volleyball. So, but you know, here we are now. 42 points you scored in 62. Anybody going to top that? I don't think so today. If so, they have to get 27 rebounds too. I don't know. Oh, you just, uh, Mark, you just see you threw that in. 42 and 27. <laughs> Back to you, Mark. All right, thanks, Ahmad. Terrell Brand of the Cavaliers has checked in for the uh, first time and hit his first shot attempt and off the uh, off the foul call. We have just under five minutes remaining in this first quarter and the West up by the count of 19-13. Latrell Sprewell of the Warriors who just came on was called for that foul. You know, Wilt not only remembers the stats of every All-Star game that he played in, he remembers the stats of every game he played in and all of his teammates combined. You know, Wilt was hinting this week that he might be able to play if asked five to ten minutes at 60 years of age. He does that about every five years. Most of the top 50 players who've been together all weekend, they've been approaching guys like Kevin McHale, now running the Timberwolves. And he said, I can play 10 minutes a game, Kevin. Bring me back. Well, the West off that drive by Payton, now leading by the score of 21 to 13. Chris Weber of the Washington Bullets, who just came on. Missing that shot, Jordan hit the floor. So the East now with Weber able to hit. Weber up front with Baker and Brandon Hardaway and Jordan. This is Tom Goliata of the Minnesota Timberwolves shooting over Vin Baker. Jordan with a quick pass and then Weber lost it. <laughs> Chris will learn quickly to, to take that one all the way. This is a Gary Payton's fourth All-Star game, and every one of them, he really loves to play in these games and generally gets everybody involved. That time he saw the opening all by himself, but he really plays this game to try to do as well as he can, try to help the team win, try to get everybody involved. Kenny Jones and the Los Angeles Lakers in for the first time. Nice move by Gugliotta. Tom Gugliotta, fifth year out of North Carolina State. A member of those vastly improved Minnesota Timberwolves who now have two all-stars in Gugliotta and 20-year-old Kevin Garnett. Flip Sanders, the uh, coach of the Timberwolves, said, now there's pressure on me. I have two all-stars. When you watch the T-Wolves, it, it's a joy. The style that they play, the enthusiasm, the electricity in the crowd in Minnesota. It's all come together. You know, his wife was the one putting pressure on him, mentioning that he had two All-Stars. He said, hey, how do you think they became All-Stars is his coaching. But he is absolutely giddy at the prospects of, uh, of uh, uh, Kevin Garnett, as, at the potential that he has, the leadership, the maturity of just one. Plus, young Stefan Marbury, who has, who, like Garnett, is a prodigy. Just unbelievable talent. Mark, in talking to... All the guys who were here for the first time. When you come out of high school and on to college, some of the guys don't even go to college anymore, but they they all think that they're just going to step right in and, and, and be here initially. And then it's a, a humbling experience when it doesn't happen the very first time. And then they realize after watching Jordan and Pippen and all the all-time guys how hard you have to work. Then they get back to it. And, and, and you have to give all the credit in the world to Gugliotta and Leitner and, and these guys who have come really fr from the depths now to the peak of the mountain. And you mentioned the jump from high school and the in the case of a, a Garnett or, or a Kobe Bryant of the L.A. Lakers won the slam dunk competition last night. But in the case of Garnett and Marbury and Bryant, not only do they have magnificent skills, but they are very mature young men. And that's, that's the major difference. And coachable and like to play and want to learn and want to play at both ends of the floor. They have learned from some of the great players like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, that you got to play defense as well. Gugliotta with the rebound. Tom Gugliotta with a second field and a steal. Gugliotta dishes it up. Garnett could not put it down. The West leading 26-17.
Pass from Tim Hardaway picked off. Here comes Eddie Jones behind the back for Latrell Sprewell. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know, remember Chris Weber and Sprewell, very tight friends at Golden State. I think he let him get in there. Hardaway and Brandon now play in the backcourt. Here's Brandon. And the crowd here in Cleveland loves it. Terrell Brandon in his second straight All-Star appearance. Averaging 20 points, six assists for the Cavaliers. Sprewell drills it. So the West up 31-19. That's a three for Latrell Sprewell. The game really heating up offensively, Mark. Back to your point about the young guys and the maturity. Mark, my experience has been that the better the player, the more he wants discipline in his program. And that's what type of skill, that's what kind of maturity these young players have exhibited at this All-Star game. Garnett, played by Weber. Garnett looking for the step, pulled it back. Rebounded by Weber. Yeah, not a lot of shot blockers out there. Time to get all the way to Chris Weber. Really having trouble getting his shoot time. <laughs> and then Baker rebounds, but a foul is called. Well, always a host of notables at the NBA All-Star Game. That's the capacity crowd. Heavyweight champion of Vander Holyfield. Olympic double gold medalist Michael Johnson. And another gold medalist, Bill Murray, in his own mind. And we go to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Marv. I'm joined by Charles Barkley. He's in his 11th All-Star Game, second one he's had to miss. And he's got David Robinson Jr. here on the bench. Daddy David sitting behind us. He also heard from San Antonio. Charles, how difficult to sit out an All-Star game, and when will you be back? I'm ready to go Tuesday. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back to my team. We've been struggling. We've got to get back on track. But, you know, this has been the most fun All-Star weekend I've had since my first game, uh, getting a hand chance to hang out with those other 50 players. It was one of the most emotional times of my life. Uh, this has been a perfect weekend. You really were almost like a little kid. You had your book, and you had all of them sign it, didn't you? Well, I think for two, two reasons. Number one, the black guys took all the chances and made it possible us guys to have to flourish the way we are today and all the other guys total they bought the NBA to where it is today and we owe them a great deal of gratitude and respect Charles do you begin to cherish these moments just a little bit more when it gets put into a historic perspective like it has this weekend I think a little bit but also I think as you get down to the end of your career and you realize you're not gonna play in that many more all-star games or you're close to the end of it you know it, it becomes more significant the West has a big lead right now. It doesn't seem as though they're missing your talents. Well, I think, you know, I don't show up my game until the fourth quarter. So the first three quarters, they won't miss me. All right. Congratulations, Charles. We look forward to seeing you in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Marv? All right. Thank you, Jim. Some of you may have seen uh, Meet the Press earlier today here on NBC. Among Tim Russert's guest, Charles Barkley, NBA Deputy Commissioner Russ Granick had contacted Charles about this last week, and uh, Barkley said to Russ, finally, I'll be talking to my audience. <laughs> <laughs> and the Rockets will certainly welcome uh, Charles back. Clyde Drexler will be out for a while, though, but uh, Barkley, as you heard, will be back Tuesday. Houston has lost six straight games. The West 34 and the East 21 with a half minute left in this first quarter. Here's Glenn Rice, who has been on a tear for the Charlotte Hornets. And back comes Mitch Richmond. Eddie Jones. Oh. That was intended for Kevin Garnett. We're down to 23 seconds. In the quarter, Tim Hardaway has had a sensational season for Pat Riley and the surprising Miami Heat. Walking it up, working the clock down. Out of 10 seconds in this first quarter. Brandon eluding Sprewell, wide by Jones. And the East will inbound with two and three ten seconds remaining in the quarter. Eddie Jones defensively, that's the same job he did on Jordan to close out the, uh, the first half of the season in L.A. Weber's pass picked off. And quickly out of five. So that is the end of the first quarter. The West 14 of 26 from the field. The East only nine of 27. Gary Payton leading the way.
to say there never has ever been a collection of legendary talent like this assembled in one place at one time. Marvin, it's the most amazing thing that I've ever been involved in. For the first time in 25 years, I am on such a cloud, my legs don't hurt anymore at wow, all. Wow, you're ready to go. <laughs> Well, Eddie Jones heading to the line. Nice move by Jones on the reverse, fouled by Glenn Rice. When Eddie Jones able to get by, he's one of the guys who can create off his own dribble. And again, Matumbo on the bench. Not a lot of shot blockers out there for the Eastern Conference. Second quarter just underway. Here's Rice. Rice off the follow going Rice. John Stockton back on the floor. In the back over the trail, Sprewell. Here's Spree going with the left hand and rebounded by Brandon. Setting the east. Brandon with Hardaway in the backcourt. Baker, Weber, and Rice up front. Brandon eluding Sprewell. And rebounded by Garnett. Well, Terrell, Brandon did say before the game he was going to be very offensive minded and shoot the ball a lot. I think he has kept his promise. Every time he's touched it, he has launched. And Jones. Fouled by Brandon. Now, Terrell Brandon is so used to playing pick and roll basketball. Now he's playing off on the wing as a shooting guard and looking for every shot as his parents in the stand, Charles and Charlotte. Charlotte, the head of NBA moms. <laughs> Terrific program for the players around the league where the mothers uh, get together and communicate, available to the players when they come into that city to talk to them. And, Terrell was asked if he would ever do that. He says, no, I got my mom. I call her all the time. <laughs> but it is a, an extremely nice uh, gesture because uh, Charlotte Brandon does live in the Portland area, and they've extended to uh, some of the young players like Jermaine O'Neal of the uh, Portland Trailblazers. That won't count. Foul called before the shot. Gugliotta picked up the foul. Meanwhile, Terrell Brandon, who is certainly accustomed to this court, and uh, and the rims not shy about popping them up five shots in six seven minutes of play I'm sure he's glancing over at Mike Fratello every single time up and down the court too say could I can play this style yes. as well well Terrell can the problem is can the other Cavaliers that's that's the problem and the Cavaliers in for a very rough second half of the season a tough schedule with many of the other Eastern teams in that area seven eight nine uh, at the conference have favorable schedules. Garnett with the block to stop Rice, who thought he was foul. 39-23, the West in front with a minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. Eddie Jones has been the hot man for the West. He has scored the last seven points for his team. Here's Rice. And again, he's blocked. Finn Baker of the Milwaukee Bucks. West now leading by 14. Kevin Garnett is really closing down the middle, making it difficult on any penetration. Gugliotta. And back comes Hardaway. Here's Baker to the fairway. Now Stockton running the floor. Looks it to Gugliotta. And it's tipped home by Jones. Eddie Jones of the Los Angeles Lakers has taken over here in the second quarter. He now has 10 points at all. Eddie Jones averaging 16 per game. 16 points, four rebounds, three assists. As Matt mentioned earlier, leads the league in steals. Stay right here. This is Bill Oates. Reach in foul. 25. We are early second quarter. It's Christian Leitner. Well, the West is just doing a better job of moving the ball, finding the open man, consequently getting a lot of open shots. Well, Dumars and the Pistons on the floor for the first time did not handle that low pass. Oh, the away from Jones for Shrepp. So Detlef with his first field goal as the West with a 46 25. Advantage Joe Dumars a uh, late addition due to the injury suffered by Alonzo Morning. Now Baker posting up getting deep and drew the foul. Foul on Gugliotta. Stockton is so 
crafty at finding guys. He gives it up early, and then Eddie Jones, the presence to find the finisher, Detlef Schrempf. The best drill in basketball to practice, and the most fun is the three-on-two conditioner, Marv, which was a drill invented by John Wooden. That's what this game is like, just up and down with the fast break and the... If you don't get it, just quickly get to the other end. Well, Matt and I understand that, but we thought it was uh, very unusual that you would run us and the entire crew <laughs> through that drill prior <laughs> to tonight's game. I like the two part where we just stand there. <laughs> don't have to move. The West by 20. Armalone is back. He is up front with Shrimp. And Gugliotta, Stockton, in the backcourt with Jones. Stockton penetrates. John Stockton. For so many of these games are games of streaks, though, where a team will get way out, and the other team will come back and score 20, 25 points in a row. Michael Jordan is back on the floor. Again, Baker posting, drawing the double team, finding Jordan. Yes, and it counts. The foul committed by Schramm, and for Michael Jordan, that is his first field goal. Now Michael has a little bit of a now look of determination right now coming off the bench. I think he's disappointed along with the rest of the Eastern squad with just 26 points up until that point in almost a, a quarter and a half. So Michael, instead of trying to do something with the ball, working hard without it. But you love to see the big guys, Ben Baker that time, but nobody's doing it better than Carl. But, but the big guys passing the ball out of the low post. So, ben Baker, nice in the triple threat position. Bill, a very effective <laughs> yes call. <also. laughs> Just kind of slid it in there during the course of the conversation. Had it batted away by Leitner. And here's Dumars, the East showing some sign. Oh, Hill lost his balance. Jordan. Rebounded by Chris Gatling of the Dallas Mavericks. Notice for the first time in All-Star history, the players are wearing their individual team uniforms instead of that generic look. But Tumbo saying, don't come back in here. They did wave the finger a little bit, oddly enough. And he's upset about it. He's been called for a couple of taunting technicals after blocking shots and waving that finger. Finger, don't bring that in here. Bill, how would you have reacted to that from an opposing player? I would have grabbed the right back and dumped it in his face. Exactly. That's the kind of answer we wanted. Here's Gatlin. Why did I think you would answer that matter? Here's a Hill on the drive. Late to try to rebound on the floor. Shrimp from below. And intended for Gatlin. All right, a 14-3 run by the East. The West having its uh, shooting problems the last couple of minutes. Eddie Jones has led the way. He's had a very strong second quarter. So we welcome you back to Cleveland. The West leading by as many as 23, now up by 12 points. Good ball movement here by the West, and Richmond fire. Shrimp with the back tap handle by Leitner, and here comes Hill. Hardaway, back to Hill. Grant Hill has the touch. Ten points for Hill. It's a ten-point West lead. Mark Penny Hardaway is distributing that ball beautifully and so effortlessly on the money every time. A thing of beauty. Hey. Well, they missed eight straight shots. Current combination on the floor for the East has helped bring them back. Nice move by Jordan. And then pitches out to his teammate, Scotty Pippen. Jordan with a show the ball maneuver, but uh, Elisha Watt did not go for it. With the runner. And a loose ball foul. The West now has missed nine consecutive shots. Peyton was called for the foul. His second. I think Michael enjoyed that uh, show the ball maneuver that has worked on many an occasion. Well, you know, Kim Olajuwon, one of the best defenders of all time, but uh, he's not going to get caught out on the floor trying to do anything with Michael Jordan. He's going to give him that jump shot all day long and try not to get embarrassed by any means on a uh, on getting beat on the dribble. Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen of the uh, Chicago Bulls, delighted for Steve Kerr, who won the long distance uh, shootout with an extraordinary shooting last night. Steve arrived here in Cleveland from the West Coast 
late. He had trouble making it in time for the required media session, so he called NBA Vice President of Basketball Operations, Rod Thorne, to tell him, and Rod told Steve, this was last Thursday, don't worry about it, nobody wants to talk to you anyway. <laughs> But the electricity in the air while Kerr was putting on that uh, that incredible demonstration of shooting is, and the concentration you see in that young man, that, fabulous. They wanted to talk to Steve after that performance <laughs> last night. A minute 40 remaining in the first half. Roman lost it off his foot. Leitner's outlet. It's a four on two and then Hill mishandled. And it was very fortunate that a violation was not called. As much as Christian Leitner dislikes playing center, Jordan in the middle. Oh, he did it right in the face of Sean Kemp. So the East is now within seven. Leitner's doing a good job holding down the middle. It helps if you got Jordan, Grant Hill, or yeah, and Penny and Glenn Rice. On a 19-3 run by the East, and they keep coming. Oh, that's good. So the West now leads by only five. At one time, it was a 23-point ball. Just under one minute left in the first half. Draws the foul. Foul on Christian Leitner. Jordan's starting to take over. When you can score on Sean Kemp in the low post, there's nothing better than busting the big guys. And then Penny with the layup and Jordan over the top. One time down the court, you face up Sean Kemp on a turnaround post-up, and then you tip over Akeem. He's pretty good. Fine observation, though. <laughs> Michael Jordan now nine points, six assists, seven rebounds. Twenty-second timeout has been called. <laughs> oh, Jordan sweeping through. <laughs> West now leads by only four. How about the smile on Michael's face? He said, I haven't done that in about seven years. The old launching pad on the missed free throw. Nice box out. And the East will get it back. The West has missed its last ten shots. They led at one point 53 to 30. They were up by 23. Here's Hardaway from 30. Yes! The West by only one. They're holding for a final possession of this first half. Now the West has had no answers for the versatile lineup of the East. They have beaten them in every area. Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan with a beautiful move. So the West finally able to hit. It's a 27-7 run. Final seconds of the first half, and Jordan was looking to uh, throw to his right looked like he wanted to give it up it was batted out of bounds last touch by the West right now only two tenths of a second showing on the clock <laughs> and nobody's walking over there to take it out of bounds lobbed a penny at the hoop right here yeah, this will need a deflection to count and here it is did he get it all in time uh, he, he caught it said you Evans would not have counted <laughs> was not a tip it must be a tip I think getting behind by 23 points uh, in the first and second quarter really got Michael fired up. He never wants to be embarrassed in any situation, and he is certainly one guy who can do something about it. Six assists, four away from that elusive triple-double. I'd keep shooting if I were him. <laughs> and we are rejoined by Bill Walton has refused to take off the uh, NBA 50th anniversary jacket as Kemp opens up this uh, third quarter by launching one. Mark, it's never coming off till I get home and I present it to my dad. And here's Finn Baker. Fourth field goal for Finn Baker, one of the outstanding power forwards from the Milwaukee Bucks. 60 to 50 in the score. Carl Malone, Keem Olajuwon, Sean Kemp up front, Gary Payton, John Stockton in the backcourt for the West. Baker getting to that loose ball. Terrell Brandon starting the second. Nice feed, Brandon for Baker. And the East has taken the lead. They're up now 61 to 60. First time they have led since the opening minutes when it was 2-0. Whose decision was it to bench Jordan? 
Oh, his old coach, uh, Doug Collins. <laughs> As Terrell Brandon, who said he was going to shoot the ball every time he touched it, couldn't resist finding the wide open uh, Ben Baker. But uh, what Doug is really trying to do is divvy up the minutes a little bit. These guys did not get the amount of minutes that the others did in that first half. He wants to even it up. And then if it's a close game, guys, he think can win it. And Michael standing out there during halftime. Being honest, one of the 50 greatest, as you just mentioned, that was tiring. Though. Maybe it was a disciplinary matter for not listening to the halftime speech. Glenn Rice with a three-pointer. And it's the East with its biggest lead of the game. They were down by as many as 23. They're now up by four points. Malone with the fake. And Malone coming up to short. Brandon with Pippen and Rice on the wings. Open shot for one of the best. And he has a, a three-pointer again for Glenn Rice. Mark, Glenn told me this morning that, that he is in the greatest shooting rhythm of his life. The hoop looks as big as the backboard. Everything he throws up, nothing but net. And he has been on a tear for the last month, averaging 30-something. <laughs> and he, the reason why is he felt he was looking at tapes of their games early in the year, and he felt he was not aggressive. And what really clinched it was his fiance told him, said, hey, you think you're playing out there? You aren't doing a thing. <laughs> and he has gone on a tear ever since. And, and the happiest guy in the world is Dave Cowens for the way that he is playing. And the East squad, who knows, who have been watching Glenn Rice fill it up lately, know that he is hot. Glenn Rice averaging 25 a game for the Charlotte Hornets. That's the number five man in scoring in the NBA. Plays 42 minutes a game, and that is second in the league to his teammate, Anthony Mason. It's remarkable what they've done in Charlotte with Cowens, Anthony Mason, and Glenn Rice leading the way. They brought that spirit back to that franchise that was rocked by a couple of giveaways. Seven-point lead for the East. They are on a 37-7 run the last eight minutes. Rice for three. Yes! That is his third consecutive from downtown. He was one for his previous seven. Gary Payton right back. So it's the East 70 and the West 62. Mark Nobody stepped up offensively uh, for the Western Conference. The foul is called, and Rice shows the entire repertoire, taking it to the basket. Well, this is a very difficult matchup for the West big forwards, both Sean Kemp and Carl Malone, who are not yet on the same page starting this third quarter. Neither one of them knows who they're guarding, and you just can't leave Glenn Rice that open. Foul on Stockton, not shooting call. Open shot for Brandon for three. First half, the East only one for eight from downtown. It is a different story here in the third quarter. And now Brandon wants to run. Pippen. Well, Baker try to slam it home, try to one-time it, as they say in the National Hockey League. The steal by Brandon, took it from Stockton. Brandon for Extends to 75. 62 lead. Play of the day so far as the best thief in the history of basketball, John Stockton, got thieved by Terrell Brandon beautifully. Christian Leitner playing a lot of center today and doing it very well. Reach in foul. Foul on Leitner. That's a simple game. Shoot when you're open, which is what Glenn Rice has been doing, and pass when you're not, unselfishly giving up the ball to the wide open Terrell Brandon. The forwards for the West are getting killed because they're used to playing the bang-up game down low. Kemp and Carl Malone. And then the strip there by Terrell Brandon, voted this week uh, by some as the best point guard in the NBA. Well, Sports Illustrated magazine had Brandon on the cover, and uh, he was anointed as a top point guard in the league. I didn't know Sports Illustrated was having such trouble getting tickets here in Cleveland. And Bill taking a shot. <laughs> Three-pointer again! So Glenn Rice is four of four from downtown, five for five. Overall, 4-4 from three-point range in this third quarter. Here's Brandon. Rice again. Now we 
I'm watching the long distance <laughs> shootout contest within the framework of the game. 78 63, the East Up. Oh, what a oh beautiful <laughs> move by Stockton. You know, Marv, even in all-star games, matchups are important. And even though Malone and Kemp are the starters and starting the third quarter, they just can't find Glenn Rice. It's just not in their makeup to go play a guy on the perimeter that, that can shoot the ball as well as Glenn Rice. 7.20 left in the third quarter. Nice fake. And a series of fakes by Hakeem Olajuwon. The East has outscored the West 21-7 here in the third quarter. Obviously, Eating agrees with Hakeem. That shot so difficult behind the board. Gave up the layup to come with the spin around jump hook. Leitner. Rebounded by Baker. Baker's done a nice job. He now has 13 points. The East 80. The West 67. Overall, the East leads the series at All-Star Competition 29-17. They have split the last 10 games. The East has won two of the last three. Here's Stockton. Yes. Three, three for John Stockton. Well, Gary Payton is really looking to pass that ball. He, he's a marvelous playmaker, but with the West struggling offensively, as strong a finisher as he is, he needs to get to the hoop a little bit more. off to uh, Peyton who was in a very uh, difficult position out of bounds. Elijah Wan now played by Weber. Just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. East with the ball. They lead by ten. A rice in a battle with Jones. Excellent interior post passing by Chris Weber that time. Eddie Jones, who was marvelous in the first half and is, is really one of the game's best defensive players, just outmatched. This is an extremely tough matchup for the West trying to guard Rice. Oh, 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 oh. And Weber able to handle that rebound. Now, Bill, this is not a statement as Dave Cowan's enjoying <laughs> the moments as he watches his guy, uh, Glenn Rice. This is not a statement against big men like yourself, and there are still you several know? here uh, in the I game. Know? Well, <laughs> because I'm late oh. <laughs> And a foul is called. Foul on Jones. And Glenn Rice wants to show that he is not just a perimeter shooter, that he has improved his post game as Eddie Jones was hung out to dry on the front there. And here running the break as big Chris Weber, who can pass the ball, delivers that one right on time. Okay, Marv, let's hear the big right. man. Well, with here. some of the key big men not in action today because of injuries, Patrick Ewing in the Knicks, Alonzo Morning of, of Miami. Charles Barkley is a, a, a large force, but not uh, one of the big men. Shaquille O'Neal of David the Robinson, Lakers, right? David Rowe. He wasn't well, but he would be here. All right. But the game has opened up. Obviously, we'd rather see some of those guys here. But we're having, I think, one of the more attractive all-star games in years. And the reason is that guys are able to flow a little bit more. And there's more room, obviously, uh, to drive the lane. And I, I think that has added to what is uh, taking place here. Uh, this evening. I suppose. I couldn't agree more, Marv, which is why so many of the big men don't play well in these games. It's, it's up and down. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, six MVPs in the regular season, never won the MVP of the All-Star game, the only award he did not win. Grant Hill, terrific defense. And Kemp got the step, but uh, had it broken up, knocked out about five. On the 24-second uh, line, are you trying to say it's a better game when the big fellas aren't in there clogging things up in the middle? Uh, at times. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, here's Rice taking it to the hoop. Glenn Rice. Uh, Glenn Rice with 18 points in this third quarter. Sean Kemp. That's only his second field goal. 18 points in the quarter. For Rice, 18 of his 20 is an all-star record. Check that he's one shy of an all-star record for most points in a single quarter. Well, back to your big man diatribe there. I, I just 
like to say that that's why my favorite big men are the ones who are the, the, the versatile skilled ones, the guys that can step away from the basket, that can pass the ball, shoot the jumper. They're not just the big galoots who stand underneath the basket and try to throw down slam dunks. Those big galoots. Uh, <laughs> the record for most points in a quarter in all-star play, 1968, Hal Greer of Matt Gukas' 76ers. We come up on a minute left in the third quarter. Hardaway! Hardaway with a three. And the East now leads 95 to 82. A moment ago, Glenn Rice did make it 20 points in the third quarter. That is a new all-star game record passing by Hal Greer, who in 1968, there's Hal, one of the 50 greatest players of all time. Uh, Hal Greer had uh, 19 in a quarter, and Glenn Rice is also online for most points in a half. The record is held by Wilt Chamberlain, and he will take this very bad. <laughs> 23 and a half, and Tom Chambers did it in 80, 87. Here is the bucket by Rice that gave him 20 points for the half. What a performance by, by Glenn Rice. Let's just see 20 in the third quarter, and he is in line to set the, the all-time record for a half. Three away from Chamberlain. And Chambers, 40 seconds left in the third. And a loose ball foul is called. It is on Baker. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad uh, just had a conversation with Glenn Rice. Ahmad? Well, Marv, you know, a lot of times it's hard to break a record if you don't know anything about it. So I thought that it was, you know, up to me to walk over and tell Glenn, and he was only one point away from the... Uh, the record of scoring points in a quarter. So what I'm going to do now is tell him that you 23 points, see, is the record for most points in a half. You just broke the most points in a quarter, so you need just a few more. Can You, you can handle that, right? I can handle that. Okay. All right. Back to you, Marv. Marv, I want you to be the guy to go tell Wilt that he's no longer with the yes. record. Book, and then at the same moment, <laughs> tell Wilt that, that Michael Jordan, where he ranks of all right. the players, okay? But Wilt will tell you that he had 24 rebounds in that, <laughs> in that same game. We're down to 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the East now leads 95 to 84. Once again, the Dean showing his major influence on the game as it is being played. Or, to put it another way, annoying the players. <laughs> Richmond for three. Back tap by Hill. Here's Jones for three. The Hardaway with Baker on the wing. Oh, oh, and Hardaway with a scoop shot with 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. The East now leads by 12. Here's Gugliano. Nice ball. Oh, Sean Kemp. Kemp with 10. Final seconds of the quarter. East by 10. And here's Hardaway. As time has run out in the third. I'm Ivan Rashad back at Gund Arena here in Cleveland. And just moments ago, Glenn Rice just broke the uh, quarter record. Yeah. yeah, see, and you look back, and Hal Grill held it, right? Right. Hal and this Grill is Wilt Chamberlain, who looked back and said, sorry about that, Hal. Well, now, do you know that the other record is most points in a half is 23, held by you? Yeah, I didn't, you mean that's going to go to you think? I'm just trying to tell you that. Oh, well, I can do something about that. It hasn't gone yet, though, right? No, not yet. Well, I can do something about that. <laughs> Even if I have to go back and put on some sneakers. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You heard it here first. Maybe a comeback. Marv? All right, thank you, Ahmad. Uh, Wilt uh, knows that uh, he's in trouble. Well, threatening Doug Collins might help to yank Glenn Rice out of the lineup. Well, there is the rundown. Most points in a half. The record shared by Will Chamberlain, Tom Chambers. Here's Glenn Rice, who scored 20 of his 22 points in the third quarter. So three away from uh, tying the record of Will Chamberlain, Tom Chambers. Nice backdoor lead, but Matumbo could not put it down as this fourth quarter gets underway. The East with a 97-87 lead. Mitch Richmond got the step and then whipped it out. Here's Latrell Sprewell coming up short. On the three-pointer. The East squad. Dumars and Michael Jordan in a three-guard setup with Dikembe Mutombo and Chris Weber. Weber on a spin and then lost the grip. Weber recovers. 
Dumars. Yes, a three for Dumars. It looks like Michael Jordan content right now to just sort of run the club, set guys up. He knows he has plenty of shooters out there to dropping back defensively. And Trump's pass off the mark. Here comes Jordan. Michael Jordan with a change of direction and slipped it to Chris Webber. Jordan, all the way back to Jordan. <laughs> Give it to him again. Joe Dumars has had a superb season, rejuvenated with the uh, Detroit Pistons. Kind of stepped aside last season, looking to get Allen Houston into the offense, and he has reemerged as a force, fires the three. And again, it comes uh, to the east as Hardaway kept it alive. Here's Matumbo with a fire <laughs> inside move. <laughs> Is that what you were talking about, Marv? Yes. <laughs> Foul on uh, Gugliano. Well, for the past several weeks online, our own Bill Walton has analyzed his greatest players of all time. And this week, we announce the complete results of who you, the fans, voted as the greatest of all time. Plus, Steve Snapper Jones providing a midseason NBA report card. And Steve will give us his analysis of this year's rookie class. It's all at NBC.com slash sports. And I'm told the, uh, the voting for centers, Kareem with 70% of the vote, Akeem Olajuwon, 22%, at 5%, and Wilt Chamberlain at 3%. You be sure and give Wilt the That's this news, yes. okay? <laughs> <laughs> we ought to send a mod back to Wilt to inform him of that, uh, Paul, but I have a feeling that the, uh, the participants, as they say, skew young <laughs> and uh, may not have seen uh, Russell and Chamberlain. Two on one, shrimp. Puts it up for Sprewell, takes the catch, and lays it in. Almost a three-second violation as they were <laughs> patty kicking with the basketball there. They said Penny Hardaway not looking at Joe Dumars in that last possession. Caught one right in the chops. The East leading 101, 89. Nine and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Hardaway. Penny Hardaway to the reverse. He has 13 points, and the East up now 103. 89 before a capacity crowd of 20,592 and the gun to increase. Three minutes in, fourth quarter. Marv Albert with Bill Walton and Matt Gugas and Kevin Garnett back on the floor showing the outside touch for Kevin in his second year with the Minnesota Timberwolves. That is his first all-star field goal. Marv Kevin is one of those guys who can do it all and continues to grow so very young. You're looking at, at a guy who's going to be here every year now for the next 15 or 20 years. And as that Timberwolves franchise continues to mature and excel, watch out. And Gugliotta now with nine points. The East 103, the West 93. At one point in the first half, the West led by as many as 23. The East took over in the second quarter, led by Jordan, Hill, and Hardaway. And then Rice picked up in the third. And the West trying to make a comeback. Here's Peyton. Peyton taking all the way. Changed his mind. Could not be handled by Springwell. Back comes Hardaway. Dumars for three. The save by Hardaway. Gary Payton really looking to pass that ball. So reminiscent of the year Mitch Richmond got the MVP when Gary Payton had, uh, I think, 18 or 19 assists in that game. Pass intended for Jordan. And the pass on the way. Oh, broken up. <laughs> The East 106 95 over the West. Here's Matombo. Oh, 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 oh. hey, yeah. It is a nine point East lead. Seven assists for Gary Payton. 
Marv, do you practice those lob passes yourself when you're when you're working on your game, coming I, down on the break? I actually uh, do. I try to bang them high <laughs> off the glass <laughs> to myself. So Michael Jordan with 14 points, 10 rebounds, and eight assists. Oscar Robertson, Magic Johnson were both one assist away from a triple double in the previous uh, All Star. Oh, Jordan called for the hard foul on Garnett. Marv at the All Star shoot around yesterday. The practice session Garnett was, and Sean Kemp were putting on a slam dunk exhibition for the fans. That was a thing of beauty. They, they were looking down at the, at the rim. Kevin Garnett is the second youngest to ever play in an All-Star game. Magic Johnson, the youngest by uh, three months. Bill, you mentioned earlier that Kevin is still growing, literally. He's uh, actually seven feet, but his coach Flip Saunders just says he's 6'12", because Kevin, <laughs> at this point in his career, does not want to be a center, although they actually other teams are guarding him with the center. And, uh, of course, in this game, he has played some of the center position, but he may just reinvent the so-called small forward position because he has all of those types of skills, being able to shoot from the perimeter, handle the ball, and pass. And a, a wonderfully agreeable young man. Did he uh, to do something for you? Is that Leitner with the bucket and the foul? So Christian Leitner <laughs> will go to the line. Kevin Garnett first went up to Minnesota. And Kevin McHale, who runs the operation up there, was showing him around and said, well, you know, here's the equipment room and whatever you would like. And Kevin said, wait, wait a second. You mean I, I don't have to go out and buy my own shoes? And Kevin, Kevin, you can have as many pairs of shoes as you would like. The East up 1-11-99. Jordan running into Sprewell, committing the foul. Michael Jordan with his third foul. Well, there's Steve Cyber Snapper Jones conducting a cybercast of tonight's game on NBA.com, the official website of the NBA. Gary Payton getting the roll. And they'll have plenty more from the All-Star game, including audio and video highlights, interviews after the game. Plus, you can vote for the greatest moment in NBA history, all at www.nba.com. Coming up in five minutes, remaining of the fourth quarter, the East up by 10 points. Garnett steps back and comes up short. Scotty Pippen back on the floor, eluding Kevin Garnett and popping the three. Leitner on the save. I am shocked that Glenn Rice has not gotten back in this game. Well, perhaps uh, Wilt did have a little <laughs> conversation with Doug Collins. Hardaway for three. three. And who's, who's going to say no to Wilt? And that was assist number nine for Michael Jordan. And Sprewell is fouled. And now Glenn Rice making his way to the scorer's table. 20 points for Rice. In the third quarter, an NBA All-Star game record. A look at the uh, shot chart. The uh, the red indicating shots made. And uh, he was on fire from three-point range. Ah, Doug Collins just called Michael Jordan over and whispered in his ear. And he probably told him two things. <laughs> Glenn Rice is three points away from tying a record. You are two assists shy of the first triple-double in All-Star history. Take care of business, like you know now. Now it should be pointed out, a spree These are not occurrences that take place during the course of the regular season. But uh, the fact that the things have been on the loose side in all-star play, the, the stats uh, do become of significance, and they are being passed on. The East is up by 10. Jordan, one assist away from the uh, first ever triple-double. An NBA All-Star game and Rice three points away from a record for most points in a half that is held by the combination of Will Chamberlain and Tom Chambers. Here's Jordan with an opportunity. Has been in. There it is. Triple double from Michael Jordan.
the first ever in the history of the NBA All-Star Game, his 10th assist in the game. And here comes Pippen with Hardaway the triple. Pippen on the race. 26 minutes for Jordan, 14 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists. And once again, the vote for the uh, all-Star Game MVP uh, should be intriguing. There are several candidates as Hardaway gets a three. There are nine voters, including NBC Sports, putting a little pressure on. The Cleveland Plain Dealer is involved. Gatley goes to the, the left hand. The Akron Beacon Journal, Sports Illustrated, USA Today, ESPN Radio. Pro basketball writers, Glenn Rice, with a record 20 points in the third quarter. Terrific all-around game for uh, Penny Hardaway. Bill Walton refusing to take off his 50 greatest uh, jacket. I am a very proud man. I, I know that. All right. <laughs> MVP <laughs> vote. Tease me about my jacket now. I, I vote for Glenn Rice. Glenn Rice? Yes. Well, Penny Hardaway was close. Jordan was close. But I'm finally going to agree with you. Oh, that's sad. Uh, Matt? I triple the motion. <laughs> All right. That's what, our vote. What's happened to me? Unless there is a dramatic turn here, we still have two minutes and 54 seconds remaining. And the East leads 121 to uh, 107. Well, they could get the 14 or 15 point play to get right into it, but. Yeah. Terrell Brandon of the hometown Cleveland Cavaliers handling. And here's Rice for three. That would have tied the record for a half. Is Will down there shaking the basket? <laughs> He's over there chattering away. Chris Gatling with a air ball. Gatling 0 for 6 from the field. But really, Chris Gatling, Marvin, is the most unlikely of all All-Stars. The serious, serious injury that he's recovered from completely, of course. With the brain surgery, uh, with the metal plate in the head from a teenage accident. He was actually headed to a vacation in Mexico. Shrepp is able to put it down. Headed for an All-Star break vacation at the last moment due to injuries named an All-Star. He said he gladly unpacked the bathing suit. Said he was happy to do it, so he's made the choice Cleveland over Cancun. But uh, just uh, so excited about uh, being tabbed as, as an All-Star. It's a thrill of a lifetime, Mark. You dream about it. And it finally comes true for just a very select few. And you never forget it. And Rice overall is 9 for 21. Gatling looking for that first field goal. Now to 135 remaining in the fourth. Brandon, nice. So Glenn Rice with 22 in the second half, one point away from the all time. Now leads 123-112. Still time for Glenn Rice to pass by Will Chamberlain and Tom Chambers for most points in a half in All-Star play. For the game, he has 24. For the half, he has 22. I'm out Rashad back at Gundarino. Now, Marv, I just want you to know that everybody has to do their part in breaking records. You know what I mean? I told Glenn Rice that what he had to do to break the record, and Doug Collins is now doing his part because during that timeout, he diagrammed the play to get Glenn Rice open so he'd have a chance to break the record. Marv? All right, let's see how this plays out. Rice with 22 in the second half. You see that the enormous... 20 point third quarter <laughs> the record for most points and a half 23 that is held by Will Chamberlain and Tom Chambers that is an all-star play and if all that fails as far as getting a set play Glenn could do what the East did to get back in this game in the first half just basket hang all right here's Pippen Rice is down low being watched by Shrepp trying to set uh, Rice up here it is has the open no, he had the open shot and now Throw an air ball. He'll say it's an assist to pass as Baker was able to put it home. He's working on his own triple double. So the East now leads 125, 112, with a minute five to go. Chris Gatling with his first field goal. 
It's amazing to see Rice's numbers, though, just with 20 of them in one quarter, just two, two, and zero. Now Garnett is guarding Rice. Get out of his way, let him go. And uh, let's see, last touched by Garnett off the foot of Garnett. Down to 51 and four tenths seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Again, they look for Rice. And here he goes, off for Pitt. And Baker is stopped, he's fouled. These guys who were getting the offensive rebounds, they need to bring it back out and, and feed Rice one more time. Well, looking a little nervous. <laughs> Very puzzling news. Uh, I mentioned earlier the uh, ballot as you take another look of uh, Rice getting the step and then uh, the foul on Baker. A French newspaper taking part in the MVP voting and the votes uh, coming in. They voted for Jerry Lewis. <laughs> 42 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter, and the East is up 127, 114. Uncontested. They're just shadowing Glenn Rice with Garnett. Garnett is not even taking his eyes. Oh, Brandon just fires it out. And the entire East bench looking at Jarrell Brandon. They couldn't believe he took the shot. 131 16 over the fans here. Love to Peyton right back down to 20 seconds. Rice guarded by Garnett. Brandon now try to get him the ball. Rice being held. They're going to put him on the line. So the foul on Garnett. The second. <laughs> Jordan is saying three, but what was that? Right. West over the foul limit. So here is Rice at the line. An excellent free throw shooter. 86%. He can do it right here. First appearance at the line tonight. And that ties the record. Oh, Will. <laughs> you tell him, Marv. Will Chamberlain, Tom Chambers, Glenn Rice. In the record books at the moment together, 23 points, most points in a half in all-star play. And this is number 24 for the half, and that is a new all-star game record. Final seconds in what has been one of the most entertaining all-star games in many years. Peyton with the slam. Peyton with 17, the East 132, and the West 120. Here's Brandon looking for another shot to end it for three. So the final, the East 132 and the West 120. The East has won three of the last four. Rice finishes with 26 points, 24 in the second half. A new all-star game, Mark. And the first ever triple-double accomplished by Michael Jordan. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad. All right, thank you, Marv. It is now time to make the presentation for the 1997 NBA All-Star Most Valuable Player Award. And to make that presentation, the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern. It was a weekend for the ages. Thank you, NBA's greatest. Thank you, Cleveland and Northeastern Ohio. Thank you, NBA All-Stars, the world's best athletes and the world's best players. And thank you, Glenn Rice, 1997 All-Star Game MVP, setting a record for the most points in a quarter and a half. Jack Greenberg, chairman of McDonald's USA, is going to help me present the trophy. Thank you, David. Congratulations, Glenn. It's been a great year for McDonald's and the NBA. Our all-star crews assisted our customers across the country in voting a record-breaking nine million times during the McDonald's all-star balloting. And it's really with great pleasure on behalf of our 2,700 owner-operators and 12,000 restaurants to participate in making this presentation the Most Valuable Player Award. Congratulations again. All right.
Glenn, it had to be special to be the most valuable player in a game like this with all the 50 greatest players in the stand. I mean, you really had your peers watching. It was very special, and, you know, I just got to give thanks to God, first of all. And my teammates really did a great job in trying to get me this award today. All right, congratulations to you. Thank you very much. All right, back to you, Marv. Thank you, Ahmad. Glenn Rice of the Charlotte Hornets winning the Most Valuable Player Award in this year's All-Star.